everybody. How many is happy to be in the house of God tonight? Everyone can just, you know what, actually just go ahead and step up if you want before. We're going to open in prayer, but we're going to go right into worship when we're done with prayer. So we just might as well get ready to worship him tonight. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask you to bless this place tonight. God, we just ask you to bless it tonight, oh God. Lord, we just ask you to bless each and every person that's walked through the door. Anybody that's watching online, oh God. Lord, we just ask you to bless them tonight, oh God. Lord, we're going to ask you to forgive us of our sins, oh God. The muck of the week that we went through already, oh God. We're laying at your feet. If it's been a rough week, Lord, it's here for you. God, I thank you, oh God, for what you're going to do in this place tonight. God, you're going to work miracles once again, oh God. God, your move is going to be so strong that we're not going to be able to resist tonight, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, oh God. Just worship with us as we sing tonight.
something out of nothing is what he does. He just speaks the miracles begin to happen. And the story that he writes can't be undone. For he is the same to God. Oh God, here I am. Oh God, you're my everything, oh God. God, I'm a sinner. God, I don't deserve your, your grace and your mercy, but God, I thank you for it. Praise the Lord. I'm going to speak a little bit about kindness. Ephesians 4.32 say, And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And the definition of kindness is the quality of being friendly, generous, and unconditionally kind. Jesus died on the cross because he loved us so much, and he was so kind so that one day we could go to heaven. And what if we're the ones that are, what if we're the ones, and we're the only ones that can help someone get to heaven? We're the only witnesses they see. What if we're the only, and what if we're rude to them? And then they think, oh, I don't want to go with them because, to church because they're rude. And, but if we show our kindness and we show our kindness to one another and sh sh show God's kindness through us, then we can, and people might be, oh, they have, they have that kindness and joy from Jesus. I want some of that. 
And studies show that a smile exudes a confidence, a bright, engaging smile inspires confidence. It causes others to see you more approachable. People will naturally be drawn to you. You make others feel better when you interact with them. And so if we're smiling and we're being happy and we're being kind to people, then they, then we'll be, then they might want to have some Jesus like us. the Lord. That was wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Grateful for all that the Lord has done. If you turn to your seat, prepare your offering tonight. Uh, Brother Ezra, come help us out, would you? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> no. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we, we do thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for those that have gathered tonight. We pray that the power of the Holy Ghost would be alive in us and would be alive through the offering, Lord, that we give. We pray that it will just be multiplied to the good use, O God, that you have intended for it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. church did you have a good time on Sunday yes I want to say a special thank you to our Sunday fun day committee um, we had a fantastic uh, independent service uh, what was the, the actual terminology was Independence Sunday, that's what it was. <laughs> um, and the services were fantastic. We had an amazing move of God Sunday morning and then again Sunday night. And I am so thankful for Scott being baptized. I'm thankful that he's going to get the Holy Ghost. That family is, they're having revival. They're seeking the Holy Ghost. And I'm just excited that we get to be a part of it. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, and we had... We had so many, our, our class was completely full on Sunday morning. We had to bring in extra chairs, and we didn't even have everybody that is, we would consider is part of our youth group. We were had a couple that were still missing. So the, the kids are excited. They're talking about knocking out a wall and making a Sunday school room bigger and all this stuff. They're so excited. We're excited. Um, so I am thankful to, to be a part of it, and I'm excited to see what God is doing. Um, thank you to our firework team. That was a beautiful fireworks show. Um, 
Andrew was telling me before, whenever he was kind of preparing for it, he was like, I really want, I really want the finale to be obvious this year. He's like, you know, it's, it's harder than you think because you have to time them all properly. You have to light them all at the right time. You have to know how long it's going to take each one to go off. So he'd like worked really hard on knowing exactly when to light everything. And so they got up there and they lit them all. And then I, I guess Caleb lit one at the last minute that he wasn't supposed to light or something. So we had this beautiful finale. And then there were two stragglers at the end. That was Caleb. So you can thank him for that. <laughs> so, but thank you to everybody who made that happen on Sunday. We had a great time. We always have a great time at Blackwell, and I'm thankful to be a part of it. Um, a couple of quick things. We do have our t-shirt order that is due tonight. So if you haven't already um, talked to me about what size t-shirt you need, you can talk to me in person. You can send me a text or you can send me a private message on the app. Um, but I need to know tonight, and we need to have the money paid um, so we can, I have to turn in that order to the t-shirt company tomorrow. So if you could get with me, um, it's not too late. You can still get in on that. And then um, if you could just take a look at your Blackwell Church app, we do have a couple other things coming up in July. Of course, we have camp. We have back to school bash. Um, and we're excited about those things as well. But make sure those things are on your calendar so that way you know what's happening and you can schedule your life around it and be a part of it. Kids Jam is dismissed. Praise the Lord. Hey, Caleb, that doesn't surprise me a bit. You're always following up Andrew in his footsteps, aren't you? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Man, that was cool, though. Thank you, Chipbuck. They sure did. Michael, Logan, Andrew, and Caleb. And they even had one really explode there on the ground. And, and uh, that was as bad as it looked from our perspective. Uh, but we're blessed. No one was hurt. Praise the Lord. God's good, isn't he good? Somebody say, I love Jesus. Well, that was easy for you to say, wasn't it? Praise the Lord. Thank you. We're going to go to, we're going to look at Psalm 118 tonight. And we're going to kind of look at it in depth. Praise the Lord. And I, I'd like to um, share with you living the life of a worshiper. Living the life of a worshiper. You know, there's, there's several out. I hope you're watching tonight. Give you a shout out. Praise God. If not tonight, tomorrow. YouTubers, uh, our, our followers on Facebook, we're so glad you're with us tonight. We want you to be encouraged tonight and you too can be a worshiper right where you're at praise the lord thank you jesus we're looking at psalm 118 father would you bless this this time we have together would you would increase and encourage and bring this teaching alive you would encourage uh everyone to express themselves to bless the lord with their whole heart Lord, to walk, Lord, in faithfulness and righteousness. We desire, Lord, the will of the Most High to be in this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, I love him. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, he, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say, that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say, that his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. A life of a worshiper, a life of living the life of a worshiper, uh, I'm going to talk some lists tonight. And honestly, they're, they're not going to be in, totally inclusive. I, they're just going to be some lists of some things that come out of my spirit, out of the, out of the word. Um, there, there are going to be some things that maybe you would add in. And that's okay, because you're a worshiper, I'm a worshiper. And we, we are all going to worship differently. Um, we're all going to uh, apply... Uh, our lives differently. I'm going to define tonight the difference between a worshiper and 
uh, between worship and praise and kind of give some idea on that. But let's just, let's just take some moments here and break down some of the scripture as we look at it. In this first bit here that we have, we have, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. It's because his mercy endureth forever. Mercy in the KJV, it's also the very same word is used in the KJV as loving kindness. It's used as kindness and also goodness. So when you think of him, his mercy, it's easily, easy to intertwine kindness. Thank you. Awesome. Um, intertwining loving kindness, kindness, and, uh, and goodness into mercy. Because God's mercy is defined also in the ESV as steadfast love. Praise the Lord. The NIV says just love. I believe that the steadfast love or mercy, it, it had to be, the NIV went love. Um, I think ESV went steadfast love because mercy is, is more than just love. It's different from love. We understand love, but the, the, the translators wanted to make sure that we understood that it was more than just love. It's steadfast love. It's a love that's different. Where, where it, KJV and in, in 1 Corinthians used charity to let people know it's more than just love. It's a giving love. It's a sacrificial love. And so we, we bounce back and forth in these things, and, and it's, it's a wonder. There's so many pages here. There's 66 books. There's um, multiple writers. There's, there's different passions, different ways people grew up. There's not only different generations. We're talking different centuries. We're talking um, different millenniums that these men were writing this book in uh, under the inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable, and it gives a list of things that's profitable. One of those is doctrine. The worshiper gives thanks. As you see here, it says, oh, give thanks. The worshiper gives thanks. It's easy to give thanks if you have your eyes open to see what God, all God is doing in your life. Uh, he or she knows God. Gratitude is a necessity. The worshiper feels the need to return unto God his all. Not just what, what is asked of you, but you look at it, I, I've got to give my all back to God. Of all the good he has done for me, I've got to return unto him. It's, 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 it's imperative in a, in a spirit of a worshiper. It's not like giving a good tip. Everybody likes to give a good tip. I, I suppose a good tip is considered 20%. Um, above that is a great tip. Below that's kind of a bummer for the person making the delivery. But, or or uh, providing the food. <clears throat> it's, it, but it's not, it's not like giving a good tip. But it's like wanting to buy everybody's in the room. I'm, I, I love Jesus so much. I want, to, I want to thank Jesus so much that everybody in the room is paid for. Amen. The worshiper recognizes God's goodness, his favor, his generosity, and his love. Can anybody worship in that fashion? Anybody live that way? The worshiper lives in the overwhelming flood. They recognize it's undeserved, it's unmerited, it's called grace, mercy, and love. The goodness of God, I just walk in the goodness of God. I look at my grandchildren, I'm overwhelmed. I look at my children, I'm, I'm just so thankful and proud. I, I, I'm blessed among all men for the, to have a relationship with my wife. I, I, I'm just beyond it what God has done in, in this facility and in, in this people. This great church that loves God, worships God, lives for God. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. So when you when you see here, he says, Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. 
for his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel say it. Then he says, let the house of Aaron say it. Let them that fear the Lord say it. And, and by declaring these, they're saying that, uh, that the, the, I lost my place, pardon me, um, that Israel, that's the nation. That's the body of people. And then he says, the, pre, the Aaron, that's the priesthood. And then when he says, those that fear the Lord, that's kind of like the body of believers. So you, it, for us today, it may say, let, the, let the, all the preachers, let all the pastors, let them proclaim it, declare it. Let all those that are part of the body of Christ declare it. That's, that's all them that fear the Lord. <clears throat> and Israel, let all the United States, let everybody, let the whole body of the believers of the church declare it. Amen? That his mercy endureth forever. That his steadfast love never fails. So I say today, say it. It's a declaration, just like the Declaration of Independence was a written message to the world. We are declaring our independence from, uh, from Great Britain. We will be our own nation from this moment going forward. It was a declaration. Well, today I say, I can declare my God supplies, my God provides, my God heals, he helps, he, di he disciplines, he encourages, he inspires, he anoints, and he saves. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you... Uh, I'd like to point out that praise is an action, okay? Praise is an action. You go up, you know, you're raising your hands, you're playing, you're clapping your hands, or you're hollering out, shouting out something. Um, you, you dance, you sing, you pray, you witness, and even giving an offering. Is, is praise. Okay? It's an action. Praise the Lord. But worship is a lifestyle. Worship is a lifestyle. Actively praising God is a lifestyle of worship. Ap actively praising God is a lifestyle of worship. When your life is all about That's not all of it. You come to church, you raise your hands, you clap your hands, you sing, you do this and you do that. You're doing that at home. You're doing that in the car. You are, you are doing an action that's part of your worship lifestyle. Worship is living and walking by faith. The just shall live by faith, it says. Worship is praising. Now, or, or praising is worship. Let's, I, said, I said that. Praising is worship. It, it, worship is not praising. It, praising is a building block of worship. So it, it's not like we have to, we call it worship service. It's really praise service. We... We um, take a moment, and I don't want to split hairs here. That's not what my, my intention is here about, about worship and praise, and let's get it all straight and all that. that I mean, you, don't worry about it. Just let it come out of your heart. Let it come out of your heart. But when it comes out of your heart, recognize that it is part of your life. Now, here, here's some of the other ways. You worship by serving God and others. Is that not part of the scripture? So you worship when, when you're out helping, 
Will you take that moment to do something that glorifies God, like a visit to someone sick, or or taking a a you know some food to somebody that's in need? You recognize something, you think, what would Jesus do in this moment? And you go do it. The action might be praiseworthy of God, but it really is worship. It's a, it's a, it's your lifestyle. You're recognizing what I am. I'm an apostolic Pentecostal. I serve the Most High God. I am a child of God. A worshiper is a student of the Word. More than just a a Sunday look at some scriptures. It, it, it's 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 study. It's taking in the Word. It's it's applying it to your life. It really doesn't matter the time. We could, we could say, you know, read your Bible five minutes. You, we could say, read your Bible for three hours. It's about how are you applying it to your life. Because I know some people who have read the Bible over and over and over, and they're still not baptized in Jesus' name. So you have to apply it to your life. It has to come alive to you. You've got to recognize it. A student of the word. A worshiper is, he gives regularly. He gives consistently. Because that's what the word says. He, a, a worshiper is a giver. A worshiper is a disciple. A worshiper is constantly wanting the Lord to, to teach them. He's constantly seeking God for more information, more in, uh, more clarity, God, direct me. I want to be. I want to go where you want me to go. I want to do what you want me to do. Your disciple, always in communication with God through prayer. And not only are you a disciple, but you're making disciples. You're a missionary, as a worshipper. And a worshiper is living above temptation and striving for discipline. A living above temptation. Do we always get there? Well, we're always trying. Is there a fail sometimes? Oh, absolutely. Are there are times when you might fail to give a tithe? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes when you skip a, skip reading the Bible through the weekend, yeah, sometimes. Uh, are there times when your back hurts too much to get out of your chair to worship, uh, to praise, pardon me? Yeah, sometimes. But a life is somebody who says, this is what I want to do. I get connected to God through these, and I'm a worshiper of God. It's my lifestyle. It's not what I do on Sunday. It's what I live every day. So as you're reading through this, um, you, you see this first four verses. You, you see there's a personal, there's a nation, there's a priesthood, and there's the body of believers. Each giving thanks for his steadfast love. Each verse implores a group. To declare God's love for us. God wants us to recognize him working in our lives. And when we do recognize it, we can be bold. Right? And I know this is elementary in some cases. And this uh, it's probably very simple to most of you. That's because I wrote it. And it's just, this is my thoughts, my leading of the spirit. Praise the Lord. I called... And I didn't proofread it. <laughs> uh, this, is your, this is your testimony or your witness. When, when, we, when we are going out there and we're saying, His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. His steadfast love is everlasting. It never quits. 
It's your testimony. It, and when, when it's your testimony, I'm not talking about testimony service. I'm talking about it being your witness. How powerful is it when you can tell somebody that has, that's in drugs and you look at them and say, I was brought out of that. Or when you're dealing with somebody that says, I don't know if my lips are moving, I'm lying. You say, well, I've, I've been brought out of that. Or they, they say, well, you know, I, I never thought I, 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 no, I could never, I could never not, you know, I, I could never wear that. And you say, well, that's what I used to say. But when I fell in love with Jesus, when everything began to really happen in my life, it was a witness. Praise God. Now, if you look at, at the, um, if you go a little farther into the scriptures here, it says, in distress, um, in verse 5, it says, it says, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. He didn't set him on a cliff. He didn't set him in a crevice. He set him on a large place, a place where he could be blessed, a place where he could be, uh, he could rest, a place that he could stretch out. God did a great thing. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? If the Lord's with me, who can be against me? Right? So the Lord taketh my part with me. There's, there's multiple statements here that I want to share with you. It says, uh, declaring, declaring the Lord is on my side. He takes my part. He is my strength. He is my song. He is my salvation. And he has heard me. Uh, throughout this scripture, you will find those statements. He takes my part. He is my strength. He is my song. He is my salvation. He has heard me. It's better to trust the Lord is another section of scriptures. It is better to trust the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust the Lord than to put confidence in princes. I don't put my confidence in the government, and I don't put confidence in the people around me. I put my confidence in the Most High God. Then it says, though the enemy compasses about me in the name of the Lord, will I destroy them? There are multiple verses that state that. It says, the Lord helps me. The Lord is my strength and my song. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. If we are the tabernacle of God, right? Then the voice of rejoicing and salvation is appropriate because it would have been in the tabernacle of the Old Testament. It would have been in the temple. It's in our services for us to, uh, often we're worshiping God. So out of my heart should be resonating, should be coming out of me. I worship the most high God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then he says, the right hand, the right hand of the Lord does valiantly. He says that twice and is exalted. Praise the Lord. The Lord hath, hath, I'm going to 19, 19. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. The other scripture says, enter its gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So the gates open. Swing open those gates. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and thou art become my salvation. Look at somebody and say praise is appropriate. We, you get in it, you get in some conversations, especially with some folks that go to other denominations, and they'll let, they'll be quick to let you know, you know, we don't do that. And, and they wonder why their congregations are dwindling. 
why their organizations are drying up. Why their young people don't come to church. And it's not all about excitement. It's not all about rah, 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 rah. It's about looking at a God that is able, a God that can, a God that does. The God that never fails. And when I see that in my life, I can't help but praise Him. I can't help but give. I can't help but encourage. I can't help but teach. I can't help but reach. I can't help but do the things that make a difference in other people's lives because of all that God has done in my own. Thank you, Jesus. You say, well, that's Old Testament. Well, that may be the case, yes. But look at this. Verse 22, the stone which the builders refused is become the head of the corner. That's in, the, that's in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul made it clear that there was a, that Jesus was that stone that was rejected. The Messiah was pressed out of the way. And, and so we do have that stone. And, and verse 23 says, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. When I'm a worshiper. I wonder at the goodness of God. I am all inspired by God. So it's easy to call him awesome. He's awesome. He's incredible. It's marvelous in our eyes. It makes the praise come out of me. It makes me realize I want to get connected to that. I, how many times have people went to went to a soup kitchen and or a what do you call those the where they give food pantry? Thank you, a food pantry, and 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 you're you're giving away some stuff, and you just walk away going, man, I I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of that. Why? Because it feels so much like what we are purposed to do. It, we are not all of, it's not our only purpose, but it is part of our purpose. And so when I, re, when I connect with something, when I feel, God, you're leading me in this. It's no different than singing in the choir and all of a sudden you think, man, I like this. And it may take you from going from a choir to, a, to a, a, a praise and worship singer, maybe to a musician, maybe to a, a uh, nursing home ministry, where you're just out there and all they hear is your voice. Man, I've done it a lot. And there's so much encouragement can't say I'm encouraged all that much by it, you know, by my singing and by my fumbling uh, through a song and, and my timings, all this and that. Promise is over there laughing at me because I can't even clap when everybody's clapping. She's just cackling. And I was trying. There was something weird going on. And brother, I was dunked under the sink. It was, it was bad. But, hey, whatever I can do to encourage somebody, right? However I can help somebody. It's part of the mission. It's part of my work. It's who I am. I'm a worshiper. I'm a praiser. Dance. I love to get anointed. There's nothing like getting anointed. I tell you, you find your passion in life, and all of a sudden you're writing cards to people who are not at church with an anointing. 
That happens. You're teaching a Sunday school class, and they may not only be, they may only be eight years old, but they get it to the point that they're filling the altars and getting baptized. Sweet. Give me more of that. Amen? Okay, so this is the Lord's doings. Doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the, the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the scripture that drew me to this chapter. We're looking for this scripture today. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And my wonder was, where? It, what is the rejoicing? What is the be glad in it? I know that this is a day, and the Lord makes our days. And, and, and I'm, I'm thankful for mercies that are new every day. But I'm also very thankful to even wake up. Amen. So we rejoice and be glad in it. Well, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I, you know, September 11th, 2001, I was a brand new pastor. I had little kids at home, young wife. I was working at Lowe's, and all of a sudden, somebody gives us a call. Says, have you heard the news? And it was like, it's like my, my stomach dropped out underneath me. Within just blocks of where we were, gas went to $5 a gallon. Cars were lined up. Down, up and down the street. Crazy thing about it, it wasn't that high just down the road, but they didn't know that. They didn't have gas buddy then. They just saw a gas station that was still had gas. We, we had, we were just lost. I, I didn't know what was happening. I, I got a report that the sister Anita missionary to Philippines she was at Ralph and Sue's and she was in the floor weeping and crying and almost beside herself because this is the coming of the Lord I preached a lot of messages about the coming of the Lord I preached a lot about how how it you know we we were going into a a new a new thing I preached that way during North Korea's kind of you know, upheaval. And and I preached a lot of that when COVID came around. So let me tell you, I'm not a false prophet. Because long all that time, I never said, this is it. I said, we got to be ready. And as a worshiper, you're ready. As a worshiper, you're, you're always watching. As a worshiper, you're looking. And when, it, when something comes along that, that ties into this, that makes this come alive to you, I can't help but raise my hand. I can't help but sing my song. I can't help but give my witness. I can't help but share my thoughts, my, my passions, I can't help but be a, a worshiper. Amen. Let's stand. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee. Send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. This is, oh, I can't wait for Jesus. I can't wait for Jesus. God is the Lord, which hath showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. A worshiper knows where the altar's at, 
and he is binding his sacrifice to the altar with cords. Not, I'm not just bringing something and taking it back with me. I'm tying it on to the altar. I'm connecting to the altar. Thou art my God and I will praise thee. Thou art my God. I will exalt thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. His steadfast love endures forever. Come on. Any worshipers in the house tonight? Hallelujah. Are there anybody with a praise in their heart so, so bountiful? Ha! Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for an altar, Lord, where I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I thank you for another altar where I, bat, uh, where I was repented of my sins. I'm thankful, Lord, for an old baptismal tank where I was, was baptized and had my sins washed away. I'm thankful for an old preacher that preached the truth to me. Uh, I'm thankful for voices in my life. I'm thankful for my mother and father-in-law and for my mom. I'm thankful for brothers and sisters of this great congregation and thankful for pastors that have been in my life, Lord. Ha. I'm thankful for my years at Bible college and I'm thankful for my, my years of teaching and I've been blessed. I've absorbed. But I've failed you so many times that I do know what mercy is and I do know what steadfast love is extended towards me a love that never fails I know oh God that you're good to your people <laughs> Woo! and I know Lord that you've got a hand out stretched to many we're seeing revival because you want souls to be added to the church. We're seeing revival because hearts are giving their, their lives to you, Lord. Men and women are coming to you, Jesus. We're expecting, Lord, some of those that have been in our Sunday school classes, Lord, that haven't made their start to make that start, Lord. We're expecting it in Jesus' name. We're expecting, Lord, for some of these that have come, Lord, and have been praying that they too will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We want to be holy for you are holy. hearts that are surrendered to you, oh God. We want to walk in faithfulness, oh God. In surrender, oh God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on, worshiper. You heard what I said. Is there anything that you could say to him? Is there anything that you can recognize? I thank you, God, that you opened that door for me. I'm able to support my family. That job is just what I, what I always wanted. Thank you, Lord, that you brought that wonderful woman into my life. I'm thankful, God, that you opened that door for my life. Lord, you let me back in the fold. Oh God, the backsliders we pray for. Backsliders get back. Hearts to get back. That we have that enduring. That steadfast love.
part of your worship. Go ahead and surrender as part of your worship. Go ahead and seek him as part of your worship. Yes, Be an encourager, it's part of your worship. Be an altar worker, it's part of your worship. Be a musician, it's part of your worship. 